Hello and welcome to Current Affairs on JTV, the global Jewish channel. Today I'm joined by Elliot Abrams, who's a former Deputy National Security Advisor to the USA and currently a Senior Fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. Elliot, thank you for joining me. Um, now, we've obviously had sad news uh, recently about the shootings in Orlando. Uh, what do you make about what's happened and the level of threat to the USA? What we're learning is that we in the United States have this lone gunman problem. We had been thinking mostly about, um, you know, uh, attacks of the Paris or Brussels variety by ISIS or by Al Qaeda, uh, and of course with the experience of 9/11 here. Uh, but this is quite different. This is the kind of thing that reminds one a bit of the uh, current stabbing into Fada in Israel. Just one lone person. Uh, who seems to be inspired by the by the internet, so that's something new, and it's going to make people think hard about uh, what we can do to make some of the uh, public places safer. Well, a lot of people have been speculating about the link to um, Islamic State. Now, while it seems that he ha uh, the shooter didn't have any direct connections, he's clearly inspired by the ideology. Yet, it seems that the U.S. government um, has some skepticism about using the words radical Islam in its conversations. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say the U.S. government, I'd say the president. I mean, <laughs> this is President Obama, who simply won't use the term. Now, Wh Why is that? Why won't he use the term? You know, I guess he thinks it's, um, uh, it, it's a form of bigotry um, or it's going to incite uh, yahoos to anti-Muslim activities. Uh, but finally, Hillary Clinton used the term uh, a couple of days ago. Um, so uh, it does seem to be personal to Obama, who, after all, began his presidency in 2009 with his famous speech to uh, the Muslim world in Cairo, June 2009. Uh, but he's been under an enormous amount of uh, criticism for this, uh, for failing to use the word. Um, OK, so he's been criticized by it. It seems he's going to run the rest of his presidency out by not using the words. Now, you mentioned Hillary Clinton has started using the words. Of course, the other man who uh, has had no trouble using the words and indeed has gone further than most is Donald Trump. Um, how, how do you see this playing out, this instant playing out into the presidential election race? Interesting question. Um, in general, I would think terrorist attacks um, redound to the benefit of Trump because he's warned about terrorism, he's warned about Muslims, about uh, Muslims in the United States. And I think also there is this sense of uh, a lot of people wanting a, you know, a strong male leader in a situation like that. Um, we haven't seen any, I haven't seen any opinion polls yet that, that really answer that question. Um, and Trump has certainly reacted to this by doubling down. Um, the perpetrator, you know, was born in the U.S., the child of... Uh, immigrants from Afghanistan. But Trump has responded by saying, um, we have to ban all Muslims from coming to the United States. Again, uh, he keeps uh, uh, repeating that. But you've just highlighted the, surely you've highlighted the inconsistency in what he's saying. He wants to ban Muslims coming into the USA, but you have a homegrown radicalization problem. We do. And you know what's interesting about this, uh, one of the many interesting things about Orlando, it is not an immigrant who did this. It is the next generation. And of course, we've seen a lot of that in Europe, where the immigrant generation tends to want to go to work. But their children in, in Molenbeek or in, you know, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Paris, Brussels, it's their disaffected children who get uh, uh, brought in to or inspired by ISIS um, online. It's the next generation that's the real problem. Well, um, I, I think we've seen plenty of examples of that in Europe, except that in this case, it would appear that the, uh, the father of the, um, the terrorist uh, doesn't exactly hold liberal views himself. No, but he is a, uh, you know, from all I can see, a law-abiding citizen. That is, he, he's not engaged in any acts of violence. Uh, and it is the next generation that then uh, uh, really gets, gets recruited to these, if not to ISIS as an organization, gets recruited by the ideology 
um, and, and moved into uh, actual acts of violence. Is there any way you can see that the US can effectively guard against such lone wolf attacks? It's very difficult to do, of course. I mean, you don't know when they're really? coming. You know, <clears throat> um, if you look at Israel, what do they do? Well, not only do they guard airports, which of course we all do, but you have a security guard at every hotel and at every restaurant. Now, um, I suppose that many uh, clubs, nightclubs, are now going to impose, uh, for example, um, metal detectors. Some do already. This club appears to have had uh, very little security, and I wonder if we're going to start seeing in, uh, you know, in baseball and football stadiums and, and nightclubs and such, uh, the imposition of perhaps not Israeli level, but of some degree of security, which we have, you know, we have just not had in the U.S. And looking at this again in with regard to uh, Islamic State itself, how do you think the organization itself will be looking to capitalize on acts like this? They were quick to, quick to claim responsibility, even though there appeared to be no contact. Is this just a lot of smoke and mirrors on their part, or are they really trying hard to recruit people in America today? Well, <clears throat> I think they're trying to do two things. Uh, they are certainly, I think, trying to commit acts of terrorism in an organized fashion uh, of, the, of the Paris and Brussels variety. But I think this kind of act reminds them that they've got another, uh, if you will, uh, uh, weapon, another arrow in their quiver, and that is uh, they don't need to have elaborate plots if they can inspire individuals. And I would uh, be wondering, as, as we look at ISIS propaganda over the next few months, if there is an effort to get more individuals, uh, not to conspire, but to just go out and kill. OK, so let's leave this for a moment and look at Islamic State itself as, as a source um, problem. Why is it we are still not winning the war against them? Well, my answer to that would be we are not winning it because we are not trying hard enough. Uh, you know, President Obama's policy has, in, in essence, in Afghanistan, excuse me, in Iraq and in Syria, has been to pull back, to pull American troops out. And slowly, slowly and grudgingly, he has used more American power in, in both Syria and Iraq. But very slowly, it's, you know, we're now near the end of his term. I think the way to do this is to defeat ISIS with a large, a much larger amount of military power. Um, to destroy, for example, uh, their uh, headquarters in Raqqa. To make them losers rather than winners. Uh, in the as the propaganda is understood by Muslims around the world. You need more power to do that. You may need more troops on the ground to do that. Does that include U.S. troops on the ground? Look, I think the American people are not reluctant to see the use of force, including troops on the ground, against ISIS. I think if this president or any president said, we're going to need 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000, I think there'd be massive support. And the problem is the president won't say that because it you know, it contradicts his narrative that he has ended these wars and pulled American troops out. OK, so bearing in mind, of course, that this president will still be in for another six to eight months, where do we go from here? Well, one question is whether there will be more terrorist attacks, um, which, for one thing, could have an impact um, on the presidential race. That's, I think, for sure. Uh, the president may be forced, President Obama may be forced into doing more if there are additional attacks. I think there'll also be a question here that uh, Congress and others will look into. Uh, this guy, Mateen, who did Orlando, was on the radar screen of the FBI. They had twice talked to him. What happened? Why was he free? Uh, why was he viewed as someone who was not of sufficient interest to be followed up? What went wrong? Or are the law, do the laws need tightening? Well, Elliot, thank you. That's uh, all we've got time for uh, today. Join us again for another episode of Current Affairs on JTV.